Okay, my friends. Today, we're going to try to talk about what I've been promising you for, I don't know, five years? <laughs> All right, maybe not five years, but at least a couple of years. And it's going to be like the bench press video. Obviously, I'm at home, so I don't have a bench press here, but I'm going to explain the concepts to you. I think even if I had a bench press and I showed you exactly how everything should be, you know, it would still take you a lot of practice. It really comes down to understanding the movements of the scapula and feeling where your scapula is. And this takes a lot of practice. And generally, it takes some, some actual coaching. You know, so if some of you have problems with this and you can't get it, book, book a Skype a consult with me. It's probably easier for you than just noodling around with this in the eternity by yourself. All right. Now let's get some main concepts down first, and we're gonna need some coffee for this one. <clears throat> and those are the movements of the scapula. We need some basic understanding of the movements so that we understand what not to do, all right? So we have elevation and depression. When we say elevation, we basically mean strict elevation of the scapula without any additional tilting. This is not really possible, but as a concept, we will say that. Then we have upwards and downwards rotation. That means the scapula is tipping up and tipping down like this. A chromium comes up, lower border of the scapula comes out. And downwards rotation, that's the upper, the acromion basically tipping down and the lower part of the scapula, the inferior border comes inwards, winging, if you will. And then we have anterior and posterior tipping. And that's basically a scapula tilting forward like this or backwards like this, which is called posterior tilting. Now, in a nutshell, as the arm comes up, we want the acromion to come up and we want the lower board of the scapula to come out. All right, we don't want to push it back. So a combination of upward rotation and posterior tilting is necessary when the arms are elevating. This is why pull, pulling your scapula back and down when you're doing a bench press, for example, that's not a good idea, all right? When the arm goes beyond, behind the body, okay? When the arm goes behind your body, this actually requires anterior tilting. So this is, for example, when you're skiing, staking, I think that's the word of terminology, but it's staking. Correct me if I'm wrong, all right? So generally in most uh, gym events, we're gonna have up, we, we will have some, uh, some need for upward rotation of the scapula. And I'm gonna show you now the most basic exercises and the principles to adhere to. For the bench press, the bench press is a little bit difficult because when you are pushing horizontally, a lot of people have this need to push the scapula, you know, to kind of finish off with the scapula. So they're pushing, 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 pushing too far. You don't want to do that. You want to keep your scapula in the proper position. So you put your scapula up, elevation, mild upward rotation. And that also involves the lower angle of the scapula coming a little bit out, which kind of looks like this. Okay. Armpit, opening your armpit kind of. It's not really right. It's not opening your arm, but it's like it's like widening your back. It's like a lat spread. When you're doing the bench press, you want to set yourself in the proper position. Slight elevation. You can see if I drop my clavicle, I have at least a couple of centimeters, so like an inch, between the collarbone and the nerves. That's a good idea. Okay. You keep your scapula a little bit up. You widen your back. Come back, and as you're pushing, as as you're pulling your arms back, you don't want the scalp to start falling down, down to downward rotation. You don't want to do that. You want to keep the scalp up as you're coming down. You might get a little bit of a retraction in the bottom, but then you're going to get out of that retraction as you push forward again. So once again, keep your scalp up. Come back, 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 and then you reverse and you push forward and you lock out with your elbows. You don't lock out with the scapula. Make sense? It's gonna take some practice, guys. For the military press, it's a little more intuitive because when you're pushing up, it is intuitive to get the scapula up. 
What can be a little bit less intuitive with this with the um, military press is that your scapula should stay up on the way down. So your scapula stays up. This is your starting position. You don't want to start down here. See that a lot of people start their military press down here. Don't do that. Collarbone is going to be jamming the nerves. And you start in downward rotation. And of course, you see I get winging. You see that? I get horrible winging. That's a really bad position to start the military press. So for most people, unless you're super skinny or have, or have very short arms, your starting position is going to be about in the height of your chin or whatever. So this is my starting position. I'm going to push up. And as I'm coming up, my scapula is elevating slightly and going into maximal upward rotation. On the way down, guys, this is a little less intuitive because the scapula should come up on the way down. It should come up on the way, up on the way up and up on the way down. So you don't want to come up, you push up, and then you don't want to have the scapula collapse. Do you see that? You don't want to have the scapula collapsing on the way down. That makes sense, right? You want to keep the scapula stable as you're coming down. So you push up and you keep the scapula up. Bam. You see, I, I, I resume to the starting position that I was at. Widen out, push up, calm down. Scapula positioning for the military press. You don't want to pull back too much. If you have a tendency of pulling back, as long as you can get that upward rotation, it might be better for you to do like a abducted, um, abducted shoulder press personally. I don't like it so much, but it's possible to do that as well. Now, for the rowing technique, um, rowing is generally easier to perform with regards to scapular mechanics, rowing and, and pull downs, so to say, than the pushing, because it doesn't really, it doesn't, it doesn't encourage that anterior tilting when when you're pulling in. Maybe only if you pull too far, too far back. So the important thing to think about when you're doing the pulling is that when you start with your arm out, you want to keep the scapula in the proper position. You don't want to start over here. As, as I told you, the scapula should not be in anterior rotation when the arm is forward, when the arm is elevated. The scapula should accommodate arm elevation by doing posterior tilting. So as the arm comes up, the scapula should accommodate that by following the arm. Does that make sense? So you start in approximately this position. I'm not pulling back and down. I'm just holding it. I'm holding it in a similar position to the start of the bench press kind of, all right? And from there, I'm pulling to here. Why am I not pulling further? What about full range of motion? Guys, this stuff is making me crazy. Your tear is minor, your tear is, sorry, your tear is major muscle, which is, you know, big part of the pull. It stops parallel to the scapula. So as I'm pulling in, this is as long as far as I can go with regards to contracting the, the teres major. If I surpass this, now pay close attention, guys. If I surpass this and I pull further, look what happens to my scapula. Do you see that all that additional ROM, it's all coming from the scapula and it's all coming from faulty faulty scapular movement. Do you see that? Proper scapular position, right? Pulling in, and then I want to get a little further and you see the anterior tilting. It's all anterior rotation. All right, it's a little bit complicated, but in brevity, keep your shoulders up. Don't push with your shoulders forward to lock out the bench press. Keep your shoulders stable, push forward, lock out with your elbows. You don't want to fall too far back also. You don't want to, stay, you don't want to be over here. Keep relatively neutral. A nice and wide bench pillow is, is good. If you, don't, if you don't have that, you know, then, you have to, then the serratus has to work more, which is fine if you have decent control. And it's a, not a good idea if you have poor control of your scapula. So in the beginning, at least, it, should, it might be better to either do push-ups on an incline or to do, um, or to do, um, to have a wider, wider bench pillow. Shoulders up, proper scapula position, you push and you lock out with your elbows. You don't lock out with your shoulder blades. Military press, come up, keep your shoulders up on the way down. Don't start down here. 
And then once again, with regards to, to, the, um, to the pulling technique, whether it is horizontal pulling or vertical pulling, keep your shoulders up, never pull them back and down. Keep your shoulders in proper position as you, as you pick the bar, don't come over here. You don't want your, your shoulder blade in anterior rotation or downward rotation as your arm is elevated as an impingement position. And pull to the maximal contractibility of the teres major muscle, which is parallel to your body. If you surpass that, it's going to compromise your scapular positioning. So I hope that makes sense. Maybe in another couple of years, I will actually get a proper bench press video made for you guys. But first, I will see if you stop complaining when I put this one out. If you do, there's not going to be another video, so <laughs> we will see. But I hope this was helpful. Uh, it's an interesting topic. It's it's a very misunderstood topic as well. Scap, it's not so easy that you can just push your shoulders back and down. It's much more complicated than that. You need to understand the mechanics of uh, the biomechanics, healthy biomechanics of the shoulder blade, but also the, the healthy mechanics to avoid nerve impingement, to get the proper, to get the, the healthy, healthy training technique, okay? So I wish you all a great day and tell me what you thought about this video in the chat box.